Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about, well, the best wine show anywhere. All right, so many, many months ago, I got six Chilean calves from my good friends at Creative Palette to review. This will be the third of six reviews about them. If you want to know more about Chilean wine in general, then please check out the first video in this series. And of course, this is a free sample provided to me, neither Creative Palette nor the winery control how I review the wine or what I say. Today's wine is from Terra Noble. We are staying in the Colchagua Valley. The winery was founded in 1993 by a group of people led by Jorge Agueta in the Male Valley or the Valle de Male, near the city of Talca. I don't know who he is, I did find a Jorge Agueta that was on the Olympic volleyball team for Argentina and went to the 1996 and 2004 Summer Olympics. Maybe it's the same person? I don't know, it's the wrong country, but he's like the only one that really comes up in a search. So anyway, the winery was originally dedicated to Merlot. The following year in 1994, they figured out that most of the Merlot in Chile was actually Carmenere. They are related and look similar. From that point on, they concentrated on Carmenere, the winery did. Well, actually, Chile did. Obviously, they do more than Carbonaire. It appears their flagship wines are two different ones, one from the Andes region and the other from the Costa region of Colchagua. It looks like they own four vineyards throughout Chile with a total plant of about 300 hectares. The Agarobo Vineyard in Casablanca, Los Lingues and Los Cactus Vineyards in the eastern and western parts of Colchagua Valley, respectively. And what I'm guessing is the vineyard the estate is on, La Higuera Vineyard. They mentioned both being in the San Clemente district and there is a large vineyard there that I mapped to be almost exactly the acreage under vine they listed. I'm using their map instead of Google Earth Pro since I can't find the exact locations of the vineyards. As far as this wine, it comes from the Colchagua Valley from two places. 70% comes from a vineyard in Los Lingues. This is actually a pretty small sub DO. It's part of the Andes zone, so it appears not all the wines in the series are 100% Entre Corrieta's wines. They do what is known as Masal selection. In other words, they don't focus on a single clone of Cab, but have a variety of clones. They will keep the stronger vines and remove the vines that are struggling. It's effectively old school farming. The other 30% come from a single clone, 169, from the Los Cactus Vineyard in the Marchigüe area. Or Cactus Vineyard, but Cactus, right? Uh, this is in the Entre Corrieres zone. Most of us in the industry don't really focus on clones other than Pinot Noir for the most part, but there are many clones for each variety we use to make wine. Their text sheet mentions that the two vineyards are influenced in the following ways, taken directly from the text sheet. The influence of both the Andes and the coast generate very different climate and soil characteristics, both leading to intense and fruity wines. The vineyards influenced by the Andes have deeper soils, which generate a later ripening process more roundness and elegance. The ones with coastal influence have thinner soils with a higher content of sand. They add structure, fine grain, tannins, and a tension on the palate. So we have a combination of Andes and Entre Corrieta's fruit here. Finally, they became certified sustainable in 2019 and certified vegan in 2020. So let's get the stats on the wine. The 2018 Vigna Terra Noble Cabernet Sauvignon Gran Reserva suggested retail price is $20. It's from the Colchagua Valley. It's 100% Cabernet Sauvignon, 70% from Maso Selection Vines in the Los Linguas Vineyard. 
30% from Clone 169 in Los Cactus Vineyard, the soil. In Los Linguas, it's colluvial and clay. Los Cactus is alluvial sandy loam with granite. It's hand harvested at Los Cactus, but not mentioned for Los Linguas. 12 months of aging, 70% new previously used oak, 30% untoasted fudra. So I'm not sure what new previously used oak is, but I'm assuming it's second use oak. Six months bottle age before release. There's a side note here. In many places, mostly in Europe, there are regulations that specify that a wine must also be aged in the bottle for a certain amount of time for release. Not regulated in Chile, but I thought I'd point it out. The ABV is 14%. The RS is 3.5 grams per liter. That's actually not a high number. European wines have to be less than 4 grams per liter for a dry wine. The pH is 3.65. That's kind of the sweet spot for a wine. The total acidity is 5.21 grams per liter. Now remember, colluvial and alluvial are related sedimentary soils with colluvial having larger bits. More rocks and silt rather than fine-grained sands. All right, so let's get into the wine. All righty. I didn't mention it in the other videos yet, but um, you might hear some planes, some propeller planes flying by. Depends on how well the noise reduction I use works. I live in, a, in an airspace where training is done. So occasionally we hear planes flying overhead. All righty. Oh, and if I didn't mention it, or I didn't put anything in lower thirds in all these other videos, I gave up using this phone for the top down stuff. It just, there's something, something funky going on, which really concerns me because this is my, in my, when I do interviews, when I, when I do my stuff, this is like camera B for me for, for interviews. And it doesn't fail, but it's been failing since February for I don't know why I thought it was an overheating issue and it was really hot and it's, it was connected to a, an, out, an external battery and it still had drained down to 50%. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. I'm gonna have to do some more testing. Anyway, so for color, uh, we've got, you know, a medium uh, concentration of ruby, red, a little hazy, uh, call it moderate staining maybe. It doesn't really have, I don't see a lot of staining, but I mean, it's there, it's pressing on the glass. And as far as, uh, here comes a plane right now. You know, moderate plus on the tearing. On the nose, kind of moderate minus intensity. It's, it is youthful. Though I'm getting that kind of drier red fruit. So raspberry and then a little bit of blackberry on it, but it's really faint. It's not like a lot coming out right now. Touch of dirt, touch of tobacco. A little bit of um, pepper, more black pepper than actually anything else. Let's get on the palate. Hmm. So you really taste the fruit on this, and the fruit does have a sweet character to it. It's not because of the residual sugar. However, this is of the three I've done so far. This does have the highest residual sugar, so it will add complexity and structure and mouth more mouthfeel than anything else to the wine. Uh, it'll balance things out. Whew, I can really feel the alcohol. Everything has been 14% so far, but this one uh, is like the wine into two weeks ago where it was a little more noticeable. And I haven't drank any of it. But with that said, uh, the red fruit is more of a riper, more ripe in nature. And it's it's got that um, raspberry. It's also got some blackberry to it. A little more ripe in nature. A little strawberry, but not a ton of it a little cranberry-ish. Um, there is some tobacco going on in here, a little bit of dirt. Um, I did get some green out of this, not over the top, but I feel like it's of the three that I've done so far, it has the most pyrazinic part. There was black pepper on the nose. I feel like there's a little bit of green pepper on the palate. I'm gonna try it again. It's really slight. It's more just a greenness to it. Yeah, there's a little bit of elegance going on here. I feel like you know, there's, there's a smoothness to the wine. The tannins are well integrated. However, it's the most tannic of the three so far. It's not over the top, but it's, it's kind of getting that medium plus is building up in my mouth, on my gums. So it's the most noticeable. Now with us, it is the third Cabernet Sauvignon. 
I might have a buildup of tannins in my mouth anyway, but it's the most noticeable of the three. Obviously, the alcohol is the most noticeable, noticeable of the three. I, I get like a lot right here. Um, and it's not, that's not a bad thing. I'm just, it, this is more just analytical uh, of, of the wine. I'm not, I'm not making a judgment on it. It's just that's the way it is. It smells really good, though. I get, I get that little bit of vanilla, a little bit of whiskey lactone. I know it said French oak, but you can get whiskey from French oak. But it's, I think it's because the alcohol, I can kind of get, detect the alcohol in the nose. So it kind of reminds me a little bit of bourbon, but you get some oakiness off the, off the nose. You might have heard the plane that time. The other time it barely came. It didn't come right over, but it was, I could hear it. Anyway, it's juicy. I like this wine. I like all the wines so far, um, but I like this one. It's very tasty. Um, I could drink this on its own. It's not something that really screams food. However, with because it is a higher alcohol wine, it's a moderate plus at 14%, bordering high. I think it's got to be closer to 14.5. But um, I think if you had like some meats and cheeses, like a charcuterie, Thing, type of thing going on. Uh, pizza. I think it'd be a great pizza one. Um, is it, it really retained this acidity really well. Um, what was the acid on this again? 5.2. That's not, that's not bad. That's it's not super, it's not super, super low. I mean, it's, 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 it's a good, it's a good acidic number. It's not a, uh, it's not a low acid wine. Like the, like, um, I think, I think this one was lower in acid, like dramatically lower. I know the pH was higher. So I think this is like a good balance that acidity really does well. That's probably why they might have a little bit of residual sugar that was left over to balance the acidity. Plus, they probably intentionally stopped the fermentation at 14%. Um, fermentation is kind of a funny thing. It depends on the yeast strain you've got going on or restrains. There's usually more than one actual strain of yeast involved in fermentation. So things get a little complicated. And then each yeast strain has a different efficiency and how well it ferments sugars. So, and then what that efficiency and blah, 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 and your starting bricks gives you your final, um, gives you your final alcohol level and, and your residual sugar level. So I don't want to get too technical because I don't, I, 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 I know just enough to be dangerous about this. So if you're a winemaker, you want to put in the comments, kind of correct all the stupid stuff I probably just said, uh, please do because I would really would welcome it. But um, but there's a reason probably why that that RS is what it is. Again, it's not high at all. It there's will be a show about the the marketing tactics of some of these companies out there that are trying to trying to tell you wine is loaded with sugar, and this is not, and most wine is not. Though we've we've talked about wines that are. Um, Sorry, I didn't want to get a soapbox. But the wine is great. I think you should buy the wine. If you can find this wine, 20 bucks, I think it's money well spent. Uh, it's not expensive. I think it's extremely well made. In some ways, it's my favorite of the group, but it's my favorite of the group for different reasons. Like the other two I've had so far, I really like them for what they are and what I could do with them, especially on a food aspect. This one is more like kind of juicy. And like, yeah, dude, I could just totally, I mean, I'm, I feel it. I'll feel it pretty quickly, but I could really, like, I could crush this on its own. This is weird. Like, sometimes Cabernet Sauvignon, like, you just drink it on its own. Yeah, I can. Tastes really good. Mm -hmm. And it's got that bit of fern, got a bit of that green to it. So, yeah, absolutely. I just have to do it for the show today. If you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. And then tell all your friends. And we'll see you next time.